What is going on guys, Fit Joker here and welcome back to the Fit Joker, it's episode number 16. We are here in Germany for today's sprint race and first of all, I just want to apologize for not uploading for two weeks. Pretty much I just started back at school last week and I had a fair bit of holiday homework to do on the last week of the holiday. So now that's all done, back into it, back at school, back into the normal sort of routine. So that means back to the normal one video per week. And if I do have a quiet week, I will try and get two, but most likely it'll just be one video per week week and they'll be going up each Sunday at 7 p.m. my time which is Melbourne time Sydney time uh, GMT plus 11 or GMT plus 10 once we go back off daylight savings time and if I do have a quiet week and I manage to get two videos done the second one will actually come out the day before on the Saturday at the exact same time but anyway we are here in Germany at the Hockenheim ring for today's sprint race a little refresher on what happened out last time because it has been quite a while Went qualifying, on track for pole, stuffed up the last corner, still got on the front row but just missed out on that first pole position, that elusive pole position in this uh, championship unfortunately. But the race was bone dry, it was a brilliant race in terms of wheel to wheel racing and if you haven't seen the race, make sure you do go check it out. But things didn't quite go to plan for us, we got into a lot of unnecessary battles and that just cost us because a few drivers managed to just pull away from us including our championship rival Antonio Giovinazzi who managed to beat us in that race and actually pulled his advantage out to 11 points so today we really want to put our head down try and score as many points as we can and more importantly beat Antonio Giovinazzi and try and reel that margin a little bit. Here we go, one shot qualifying in Germany for today's sprint race to go into turn number one careful not to run wide on the exit and not to corner cut. And we get through there successfully. We're up into first places down towards turn two. Very tricky on that break uh, on the brakes in that corner. It's very deceptive as to where you have to break. You think you can break really late, but in truth, you have to break very, very early. But now we are on to the long DRS straight or curve, which it is where it currently leads. We head up towards the hairpin break around 150 meters. Try and clip the apex and get the power down quickly as you can for this quick run and this flat out right down into this new part of the track and we're currently sitting in second place as I've stuffed this corner up a little bit just breaking a little bit too early it's the one part of the track I don't really like here at Hockenheim but out of there back onto the original circuit coming up to the famous stadium section through the right hand up could have been a little bit more committed through there as it comes down towards the hairpins we lock up the front left and run it very, very deep. We do get a solid run out of that corner as we come up to the penultimate corner. And now one corner to go as Sorokin and Nato are fighting over the leaves. We are currently in P12. Up towards the line, Sorokin takes pole. And we come, come across the line in 11th place. Apologies. Norman Nato takes pole from Sergei Sorokin by... No time at all. It was literally a dead heat between Nasso and Sorokin for pole position. That is absolutely crazy. And it's also a dead heat between Louis Delatraz and Gustav Malia for the second row of the grid. It's also a dead heat between Fuwoko and Leclerc for 6th and 7th. And also a dead heat between Giovinazzi and Marcello. Far out. That is a crazy qualifying session. So many drivers setting exactly the same time as other drivers. You've got Nato and Sorokin, who both set identical lap times for pole position. The two teammates at Racing Engineering, Delatraz and Malia, setting the exact same time for third and fourth on the grid. Then you've got Alexander Albin in fifth place. Then you've got the two Primas setting exactly the same lap time for sixth and seventh. Then you've got Giovinazzi and Marcello setting the exact same lap time for eighth and ninth. Then you've got Artem Markov and myself in eleventh. That is crazy. I've never seen something like that before. That is a crazy qualifying session. So, so close between so many different drivers. So it looks like it's going to be nice and sunny for the entire sprint race, so it means it's going to be a pretty simple one stop like all the sprint races, starting on super softs and swapping to the softs around lap 6 and going to the end for the 17 lap sprint race here at Hockenheim. Here we go, engage the clutch, get the revs up, the lights are coming on, we've got 5 lights. 
and it's lights out and away we go the sprint race here in Germany is underway and we get a very good start as we pull to the inside of Raffaele Marcello as we head up towards turn number one again a little bit of a tap from the Italian as we get very very sideways we manage two survivors now getting run off the road by these teammate Jordan King and we almost put it in the wall but we've managed to survive but lose a few places we're down to 13th places Jordan King has a horrid run making contact with his teammate now we're going to look up the inside actually swaps the outside of Marcello who is now trying to pass Artem Markov that oh we're about to go four wide possibly up towards the hairpin this is not going to end well very careful on the brakes we're still at the inside of the Campos racing car but he goes right around the outside and his teammate tries to follow him Jordan King we're now going side by side with the young Brit into the right hand and we make that move stick we've only lost one place after a very scary start a very interesting start contact with a few different cars I thought I was gonna put it in the wall and be out of this race already but we managed to keep the car going and we had only lost one place somehow we are still pretty close to the back of Marcello in front of us but not the start of the race we wanted here we go we're going to run on Marcello we're going to pull to his inside into the hairpin and try and take 11th place from the Italian and we make that move stick up into 11th as there's a big pack of cars squabbling in front of us we're going to try and use that to our advantage hopefully they'll hold them up a little bit as Markov is going very slowly into this corner if we can get a couple more positions up to where Alban is in eighth place we will get into the points but as you can see Giovinazzi is just in front of us so as it stands neither of us are going to be getting points in this race try and get a good exit off turn two through turn three onto the DRS straight bump it up into rich revs we've got DRS open and we've got slipstream on the Russian time car of Artem Markov we pull to the inside up into the hairpin and we're not going to try it up the inside of Giovinazzi we do want to keep this car in one piece at this stage and I do think we have the pace to try and get past a few of this, these cars as we do move ourselves successfully up into the top 10 but however this is the sprint race so the points only go to the top 8 drivers today here we go rich revs DRS and slipstream on our championship rival and the championship leader Antonio Giovinazzi we throw it on the inside of the hairpin we're going to give him a squeeze we make that move stick past our championship rival up into ninth place but not into a points paying position however the cars in front of us are really squabbling from Sorokin in fourth place all the way back to Alban in eighth so this is a beautiful opportunity for us to try and get up into the points they are so close in front of us and a few nice overtakes and we'll get a lot of points in today's race better run off the hairpin up the inside of Alban that is not an overtaking opportunity but today it is and we make that move on Alexander Alban as Antonio Fuoco pulls off into the pit lane getting us up into sixth place I think some other cars may have pitted as well someone else I didn't catch who it was but we've now got the prima of Charles Leclerc up in front of us here comes Alexander Alban up our inside and another car I think as we head down towards the hairpin Alexander Alban is not giving us much space we're going to try a switch back oh our championship rivals there we've spun our championship rival oh god that is not good I didn't know he had his nose up our inside the safety car is being called for a spin um oopsie daisies uh I didn't see him there and I was trying to get a switch back and get a run on Alexander Alban but he just stuck his nose in there and I've spun our championship rival that is um interesting to say the least a little bit controversial however he is still in eighth place and because of the safety car he's going to catch right back up to us and we do actually get a free pit stop but I do think we are going to get jumped with uh being right at the end of the pit lane so it's not going to quite work out for us but this is close enough to our pit lap we would normally go one more lap but Alexander Alban can't pit because the Rockin is coming into the pit lane but here we go into the pits we go try and get the car stopped and we do a lot of cars are coming into the pit lane right now you got Alban um, the dams car of Roland and um, 
My main, my brains just stopped working. The Prima. And our teammates actually come into the pits this lap, so that's a little bit of a mistake. We're going to come out of the pits in 11th place at the moment. So uh, this race has taken a little bit of an interesting twist. We've spun our championship rival, and that has triggered a safety car. Here we go, safety car restart. And we're currently sitting in 5th place. We've got Leclerc, Sorokin, Roland, and then Delatrez in front of us. We've got Norman Nasso and a few other cars behind us. So we get ready to go racing again here in Hockenheim after a very odd safety car. And here we go. Delatraz is going to bolt now as the green flags come out and yellow seem to already be out. And Raffaele Marcello is out of the race. We're going to get another safety car immediately. It doesn't look like it, but he's been taken out on the safety car restart. That is very, very odd. It must have been a mechanical failure or something, surely, for that to happen on the safety car restart. Very, very odd, but we are still in fifth place. We haven't actually had the best restart in the world. We haven't been able to stay right on the back of Charles Leclerc. However, Nato has been able to stay right on the back of us. He's pulling to our inside as we head up towards the hairpin. And he makes that move stick. But we're going to try a switchback line. No one's there this time. And we get a little bit sideways on the exit. We are still up the inside. No, we're not. And he makes that move stick for fifth place. But can we try something back up his inside? No, we cannot. We're going to have to concede that position and wait behind to try and get back past him. Oh, Nato is pulling off into the pit lane. Very odd call. Going for a two-stop strategy yet again in the sprint race despite there being a safety car intervention. A very odd uh, call there, and it sort of cost me a little bit of time because he really parked it coming out of the penultimate corner because he had to pull off into the pit lane. It's lost a little bit of time to the battle pack up in front has allowed the pack behind us to catch up. But a little bit of a sit rep. There is a massive battle going on between Oliver Rowland and Louis Delatraz for the race lead while about four of us just sat there and watched. I was never quite close enough at the overtaking opportunities to have a go at Norman Nato. But now I think we're going to be under fire from Gustav Malia. But the front runners are actually on medium tyres, so this could close up to the end of the race and have a very tasty finish. We've got the run on Charles Leclerc. We're going to look up the inside of turn number two. We make that move stick up into fourth place. However, he's going to come back at us up towards the hairpin. We're going to try and squeeze him a little bit, but we are going to have to go right around the outside. As you can see, Delatraz and Oliver Rowland are still going at it for the lead. Another lead change. We're going side by side with Charles Leclerc. is dead even as we head down towards this left-hander. He's right there on our outside. We're going to give him a little bit of a squeeze. He's still there as we head into the right-hander. And he has conceded, and we take fourth place from the Monogast driver. Oh! Oh, we've spun a huge moment there on the curb. And we've put the car into the gravel and into a spin. I don't even know what happened. I just touched the curb, and the car just went, and we've dropped all the way down to 10th. And oh, we're back with Antonio Giovinazzi. Unbelievable, and now he's going up our inside, and we've run off the track with gravel on our tyres. He's made that move stick. There goes Emil Bernstorff and another car. I think that is Nicholas Latifi. We're going back around the outside of Nicholas Latifi. Back up into 12th place with that. That is what you call a quality bottle right there. On for fourth place, and just touch the curb and lose the car. I don't even know how it all happened. It happened so quickly. We are currently in 12th place as our championship rival is right there. And he's actually been hung out to dry a little bit by Burnsoft. But I just don't get the best drive off the hairpin. But we've got one and a half laps to go. We're going to try and beat Giovinazzi. Play the psychological game and try and get the upper hand here in Germany. Even if it's got no points and no effect on the actual championship. Here we go. On to the DRS straight. We've got DRS and Rich Revs. However, he is trying to pass Emil Bernstorff. We're going to have to try and go up the inside of Bernstorff into this hairpin. Possibly up the inside Giovinazzi as he locks up a little bit. We make that move stick, I think, on Emil Bernstorff. No, he is still right there on our outside as we head through this fast right-hander. And he's still there as we head down towards 
this left hander. I'm going to go right around his outside. We make that move stick. And we are still right on the back of Antonio Giovinazzi. We only have a few corners to go. And we really want to beat him today for that psychological advantage. It may mean nothing in the large scheme of things. But the little things do count as we have a reasonable exit. Oh, we've almost lost the car yet again as Oliver Rowland has won. We can't stick it up the inside of the last corner. No, we cannot do it. And we almost spin it off the final corner to come across the line for 11th place. Oh, I couldn't quite get past him. Emil Bernsdorf just got in the way a little bit. We come home in 11th place. A very disappointing race in truth. We were on for a fourth place there. We were battling. We were in that sort of battle pack for the lead. I don't think I could have gone to the podium. But we were sitting in a fourth place, and I don't even know what happened, to be honest. I just went through the left, right, pretty normally, and the car just snapped on me, and I was gone. I didn't really have a chance of catching that. It was a very, very odd moment there. But anyway, Oliver Rowland has won this sprint race from Louis Delatraz with Sergei Sorokin joining them on the podium. Those two, Oliver Rowland and Louis Delatraz, were having a brilliant battle for the lead. They were changing the lead almost every single lap there. But unfortunately, I was, I think I was in fifth at the time, and I, or fifth or sixth, and I was just too far back to try and attack the car in front of me, so I couldn't really do much, but I did get a nice view of their battle. It was mainly down to the hairpin, but Oliver Rowland managed to prevail in that battle, but only by two tenths of a second. Of course, I just said, Sergei Sorokin joined those two on the podium. In fourth place was Gustav Malia with the two Primas in fifth and sixth with Fawako coming fifth, and Charles Leclerc in sixth. Alexander Alban finished seventh, with Jordan King in eighth, rounding out the points. Artem Markov the first to finish outside the points. Antonio Giovinazzi in 10th, just beating me home to 11th. With Emil Bernstorff in 12th, who, little, who played havoc with our little psychological plans at the end of that race, unfortunately. Then down in 13th is Nicholas Latifi with Luca Giotto in 14th. Nick DeFries, 15th. Sergio Seda Camara, 16th. Felix Rallis, uh, 17th, Norman Nato with that two swap strategy dropping all the way down to 18th. It's just madness why he did that. I was really confused, but he, he always seems to go for that two swap strategy in these sprint races. Norman Nato, it's very, very odd. Maybe he's pretty harsh on his tires and he needs to go for that two stop strategy, but it doesn't quite make sense to me. But it really cost him. Like, he had pole position and he came home in 18th place. So that's just. A very odd call there from the Russian time boys. But in 19th place was Igor Arudzev with Nobuharu Matsushita in 20th. And 21st and the last of the finishes, our teammate Sean Galil. And of course, Rafael Marcello did not finish the race after something happened on the safety car restart. And it was a mechanical failure that took Rafael Marcello out of that race. So after today's race, the first two positions in the driver's standings are completely unchanged. Antonio Giovinazzi still leads from myself with an 11-point gap in between us. However, in third and fourth, things have changed a little bit. As we've now got Louis Delatraz and Oliver Rowland tied for points on 115 points apiece, and they are only three points behind myself. Rafael Marcello is in fifth place with 101 points, only three points ahead of Norman Nato in sixth, with Charles Leclerc in seventh with a one-point lead over over Luke Giotto in 8th. A bit of a gap back to Antonio Fuoco in 9th, with Alexander Alban in 10th, only one point ahead of his teammate Sergei Sorokin in 11th, with Gustav Malia rounding out the top 12. In the team's championship, Racing Engineering are leading with an 11 point lead over Prima Racing in second, with only a 3 point gap to Dams in third, with Campos Racing now down in 4th place with MP Motorsport. 5th, ART Grand Prix are up to 6th with Russian Time 7th, Rapax are 8th, then Trident we are down in 9th because um, our teammate Sean Glyle is still yet to score any points so every single point we have in the team's championship is from myself and that really is hindering us in the team's championship as you can see we are 9th place only ahead of Arden and Carlin who are the two teams that really struggle to score points neither of those teams are into double digits yet while every single other team is into triple digits so that was an interesting race to say the least, or a very controversial race 
with us spinning our um, our championship rival, and that was just stupid. I should have known he was going to be there. It was just stupid driving from me to go for that switchback, knowing that I'm in a I'm in a pack. It's not a one v one battle. There is other cars around me that are going to try and get involved. But I should have known better than to go for that switchback, and that was completely my fault to spin him. But luckily. With the way the safety car came out, he didn't really lose any time. However, I don't think he actually pitted on that very next lap. He went around another time because I think his teammate Kamara might have come into the pit. Which is um, what has been happening with the Campos guys where they've been favouring Jordan King instead of Rafael Marcello. So that did hinder Giovinazzi. But the, the, um, the strategy sort of worked out for us with the timing of that safety car. We got up into 5th place, or 6th, we were fighting there. We were right on the back of that lead pack, and then I don't even know what happened through that left-hander. Like, I just went through a little bit of curb, not too much, and the car just snapped. We didn't have many cars in front of us, we had a bit of a gap in front, a bit of clean air. It was really, really odd, and I just had no hope of catching it. The car just went so damn quickly. It was really odd, because I watched the footage of the previous lap. I took double the amount of curb the previous lap, while on the gearbox of a car behind a car in front of me on the previous lap, and the car was 100% stable. The next lap, less curb and cleaner air, and the car just snapped. I really don't understand that, but those things happen sometimes. It was unfortunate, but it goes into an interesting battle with our championship rival yet again, Giovinazzi. We couldn't quite beat him there, unfortunately. But that is all for today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be next for the channel. See you all next time.